Welcome to the channel and today I'm here in Davao City in the southern Philippines at the People's Park. And we have some really great news from the Philippines. So they came out with an executive order that makes outdoor masking optional now. So I'm exercising the option. Although it doesn't look like anybody else is. Though they told us to take our masks off when we came in for the CCTV camera. I don't know if people are just so conditioned that they still do it or what. It's like maybe one in 10 people aren't. Um, interesting. So I'm gonna run around this park. I have actually driven by here tons of times over the years. Going all the way back to I think 2016 was the first time I came by, but I never came in. And when I came back to the Philippines this time, it was closed down due to everything else that was being closed in the world. And apparently it's now finally reopened. So I'm gonna check this place out and I'm gonna bring you along with me. So the park seems to have a durian theme to it. This building here kind of shaped like a cut open durian on the bottom. Forgot to bring my wind sock on here. Hopefully, you guys will be able to hear me. So there's so much artwork in this park. All the little panels with the flower planters here. You can see Hopefully the GoPro picks this up. Stuff representing different Filipino stuff and it's, it's really all over the place. The different artwork. Show you here another panel one. But this place is really, really popular with the people. The first time I'd ever heard of it, I came here years and years ago. I didn't come in, we were just, uh, we were on the outskirts and I was driving with my brother-in-law and he wanted to stop by and see it because it had been a year or so since he'd been, he's from a different, pro he's from out in the province from here, he's not from, from Davao and he wanted to stop in and show me the park but it was too crowded as far as finding any parking for the car he was driving so we, we didn't make it that day and it was, it was evening and I think maybe they were getting ready to close it down but I was really excited to finally get out here. There's really not that huge of a crowd it's uh, it's a Sunday afternoon. Looks like they may be getting ready to do an event over there. Even though there's this great news that they are relaxing some of the restrictions and stuff, what really amazes me is that it's, you know, here in Asia, it's so ingrained in people's head that they've lived a certain way for so long and they continue to do it. And it's just, it, it baffles my mind why when you finally get some freedom that you would, you would not embrace that. But I guess that's just the, the culture and you know, I respect that, I understand that. This building has some amazing architecture. That is like super cool. The sun's hitting it. I hope that comes through good. But they got these, those things jutting out from it. I saw this from the other side when I was coming around. And, uh, well, anyway, back to topic on here. So as you can see, if you just kind of look around the area where you got all this beautiful foliage and stuff, but the vast majority of people are still living, you know, like they were under the restrictions. Um, very interesting. But the good news for you, if you're thinking about coming here, is that in open spaces, now that mandate, like I say, has only been lifted outside in open spaces to where you can kind of go back to normal there. If it's places that, you know, you can't get apart, you're supposed to be, doing it and obviously going into malls or grocery stores that all stays the same i really don't see them backing off of that anytime soon um i don't take a position one way or another on it i'm just 
you know, if I'm outside and I'm at the beach, I want to be able to, you know, breathe oxygen again. So I kind of like that. And it's a step in the right direction for reopening. It, it, it's, it's an example of how we are getting into an age, even here in the Philippines, of things starting to progressively but slowly reopen and get back to normal and make it a place to where you know you can come here and you can come back for tourism you know thailand threw in the towel on that after i'd left i predicted they wouldn't just because the population there was so entrenched and so against it but the government there just said forget about it we're going to open up but we're not going to be able to eat and they did that and they are actually seeing a lot of, it's just a lot it's not like it was back to normal again but they're seeing a lot of new tourism that's coming in a lot of people are coming in there it's becoming one of the destinations if not the destination to come to in asia because they went ahead and decided to you know let's live our lives again we'll see how fast the philippines does that i predict very slowly i don't know that for cert certain i don't have a crystal ball i just know what i've seen in the culture and what i'm seeing with the people you know that um, that it is slowly 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 reopening so still a wonderful time to be here um other, other than those one things um as far as in stores and stuff it's a wonderful time to be in the philippines um and i'm happy to be here so as you travel around the world and the more countries you go to you find out that especially in tourist places but really everywhere there are different scams that you got to deal with and one that is basically in almost every country and every place that i have ever been even this last year anytime i've been traveling was what i call the taxi cab scams the one place in the entire world that i felt kind of immune from it was actually in the place that i'm at right now which is davao city in the philippines i've been here tons over the years and had never seen anything like it here it just hadn't happened and i'm not even though I've traveled around the world a lot, I'm actually not immune to it. So the first time when I moved to Great Britain, I lived there and went to school at a, at a university for one year as an exchange student, basically. And when I got off the plane, I got a taxi. It was not one of the black taxis. I didn't know any better. It was before at least widespread internet. I was poor. We didn't have internet back then where you could research stuff like that. Basically, you had what was called a fooders or a photos book that told you about the city or the location you were going. So I got out at the train station um, after coming in from, I think it was Gatwick Airport, and a guy came up to me, says, are you looking for a taxi? I'm like, yes, and don't know no better, fine. He takes me across town. Really wasn't incredibly far, but so when we get there, my bags were in the back. You know, I was a young, I think I was, I don't know if I'd turned 19 yet. I may have been 19. And he tells me how much it is. And it was basically, it was the equivalent to either 60 or 70 US dollars. Uh, it, it almost took up every British pound that I had gotten uh, before I had, before I had traveled to, to there. And so, you know, what am I going to do? If I get out and start a fuss, he's going to drive off. Of course, he waited till I got out before he told me. He's going to drive off and take my bags. And this is like the classic scam that you get all over the world. And that's the first time I was victimized uh, by that. Um, just a young person with very minimal travel experience and didn't know that. Now, years later, I'm on to that. So anyway, everywhere I go, I actually did a video on it. I'll put it up here somewhere in Serbia, which had a terrible one, um, taxi scams. It's so funny, if you'll read some of the comments in there, you've obviously got people whose relatives or themselves are participating in the Serbian taxi scams, and they're saying things like, oh, well, if you go to Switzerland or something like this, it's, it, they charge you that as a regular fee, which is like 20 euros or something. And they, they actually try to justify it is it's okay to victimize somebody simply because they're a guest and in the country they come from, they make more money. Well, the Philippines is no different. They have those too. It's, it's very famous in Manila. Uh, the airports, basically airports anywhere in the world where you're coming into as a foreigner. So you saw that a lot in um, all kinds of scams like that in Manila coming in, especially with the taxis there. 
But in Davao, I'd never seen that happen. It was, I mean, they basically, you get in, you get picked up at the airport by a taxi, they turn that meter on. It starts like, I think now it's like 40 pesos. Um, very reasonable rates, very fair. They treat everybody the same. There was no discrimination in Davao. You didn't pay a Kano or a foreigner tax, as they like to call it. In Davao, it just didn't happen. The city was no corruption, was just run very efficiently. And all, all this was obviously before the world shut down and people started hurting. But for the most part, when I got back here to Davao, that's what I saw. Well, this time I actually came in and I used public transportation. I came in on a bus uh, from Digos uh, rather than being brought in or driving in myself. And uh, by the way, a bus from there is about an hour away. It was 120 pesos, so a little over $2. Very, very reasonable. Got off at the bus station, and I had recently heard about these, basically they're motorcycles, and they throw you on the back of them, and they take you to wherever you're at. The person I'd talked to had done it. They had gone to immigration. Uh, don't know why they didn't just get a friggin' regular taxi. But anyway, they got, they got put on the motorcycle and taken to the immigration office. And they charged them, I think it was, I think they told me it was 600 pesos for a very short motorcycle ride. It wasn't very far, which is like 12 US dollars. I just got ripped off. These are obviously unregistered hobble hobble taxis. Uh, I've never ridden one, um, but I'm familiar with what they are. So when I got off the bus, immediately I got bombarded, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll take you on a motorcycle. I'm like, no, I don't want any of that. Walk down to the end of the block where I know the taxis are usually at there, or they had been years ago. Last time I rode a bus, it was, it was either 2017 or 2016. I can't remember. I think it was, 20, yeah, it was definitely 2017. So anyway, got there and flagged down a taxi and the guy immediately comes up and he's like, he doesn't want to set the meter. He's wanting to take me. It's not a very far distance from where that is. Uh, I believe he was asking for 350 pesos. So roughly about seven US dollars. That's not a lot of money for somebody who's living in Washington DC or something. But a metered taxi, which I told him no, he tried to negotiate down, I think he went down as low as 250 pesos, but I wanted a metered taxi. So I got a metered taxi, and the metered taxi was, I think it was, I want to say it was 110 once we got there, which is a little, it's right over two, actually I think it's a little less than two dollars with the exchange rate, because we're at 57 pesos right now. So anyway, it'd be right at two dollars. So basically was wanting to charge twice as much money on there. And this was a licensed taxi. Um, I've, like I said, I never had seen that in Davao before. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's on a smaller scale, but it's actually come here too, and that's, that's sad, because uh, I, I absolutely love this city. But didn't want to be a Debbie Downer on that, but we have good news in the Philippines, and then kind of uh, just sad news as far as that change that I've seen with my own eyes. I just... This was always a place to where basically, Davao, you've always been treated the same. I've never had anybody try to treat me differently because I was from somewhere else. Um, I was treated with equality here. Uh, the government in this city for was, I don't want to say notorious, they were, it was because it's a good thing. They were very good at making sure, you know, no corruption, nothing here. And I'm sure still they are that way. These are just minor things that are kind of slipping out in those locations but i hope that doesn't grow now that we're re-entering a new world where we're going back to normal i hope things go back to normal here as well and we see that same fairness here in davao as we've always seen before but anyway nice day at this park it's getting down near close to sunset and i'm probably gonna run from here and go to the night market but i did want to kind of give an update of the good news about the masks and kind of the the taxi situations that uh, I'm seeing here in the Philippines. So a little update to the video is that about a day after I filmed all of that footage, turns out they actually arrested a taxi driver here in Davao for not turning the meter on and running up rates. A lady had gotten picked up to the airport, at the airport, 
and taken by a taxi into town. He didn't turn the meter on. They then arranged a sting operation to where they caught the driver and arrested him. So they still take that stuff very seriously here in Davao and want to make sure that people are, there is no corruption, there is nothing on board. And they put out a new memo explaining again to the drivers that it's a $5,000 or 5,000 peso fine if they do it the first time, a 15,000 peso the second time, and on the third one, they'll impound the car. So they take it very seriously here to protect people who use public transportation from that type of corruption. So I'm glad to see that Davao is still the city that I remember from so many years ago. Guys, if you like this stuff, don't forget to hit the like button, tells the algorithm to tell other people that this content's useful, and also hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of this type of content in the future. Thanks, take care.